Yeah, my first winter out here, there was some moments where uh, I was totally cool with like just uh, laying down and dying. Uh, but you know, luckily I didn't die, so um, you wake up the next morning and you just keep going. My name is Alex Javor. I'm 31 years old. I did six years in the Army. Yeah, after I got out of the Army, I was a really angry and bitter person. After a couple years of living a really soft lifestyle in the city, I'm uh, moving back to my cabin in the bush. I didn't grow up out here. You know, it's not like my you know bush father taught me all the secrets of the bush. In the city, the things you're doing in your day-to-day -day life suck. Sitting in traffic, uh, working sedentary jobs, dealing with toxic people. I hate all that. I moved to Alaska because there's not too many places left in the world where you can be free. Twenty-four hours after leaving his city life behind, Army veteran Alex Javor and his trusted companion, Sipsy, are heading to his remote cabin 250 miles away from Anchorage. The closer I get to my cabin, I begin to get a big sense of relief. All the kind of city baggage type of stuff fades away. Life becomes very simple once you're out there. You know, you can just kind of forget about everything, get food, drink water, keep yourself warm. But I've been working behind a computer for the past couple of years. I've gotten out of shape. So once we get there, it takes maybe an hour or more to walk to where my cabin is. In order to get to the cabin, Alex must hike three miles of uncharted terrain before darkness and freezing temperatures set in, or risk spending the night on the trail with no shelter. You ready, Sipsy? I mean, we're there, bub. Now the real uh, struggle begins. If I wanted convenience, I'd go to the convenience store. But I seek challenge in life as best I can. Anytime I go out on a hunt, I always like to confirm the zero of a gun. And it could be something as big of a magnitude as a moose or caribou hunt, and it's something as little as a small game hunt. Good to go. My little trail gun is hitting dead on. So it's time to load up and go hunting around my local trails for small game. The land surrounding Michael Manzo's cabin, 70 miles from the city of Fairbanks, is rich in small game. With winter on the horizon, he must take full advantage of any opportunity to stock up on protein. I see a snowshoe hare track going around up there. So there's animals bouncing around right here, and, and it's right in my backyard. It's getting real cold out. It's windy. These winds not only make the small game animals nervous, but also you see this tree right here fell down in the winds. It just fell down, and there's a, a couple of people I actually know in Alaska who were killed by trees falling over in the wind. So the winds not only make the hunt a little harder, it's also dangerous. So you really got to be aware of your surroundings. Right here is a rough grouse track. So they're in here and they're moving around on the, on the ground. He found a little piece of uh, wild rosebuds. He picked one apart and ate all the flesh out of it. So there's some rough grouse kicking around here. They're eating. I 
I'll get down here to where the trail kind of intersects a slew of the river. These rough grouse, they like hanging out in these thickets. This uh, eagle has the same idea. He's hunting these islands too. Well, I'll let him hunt that island and I'll hunt this one. I used to just be a simple, poor kid with a fly fishing pole, a mountain bike, a shotgun, and I just run around, I was happy. So I said, well, why don't I try simplifying my life again like that? How simple can I get it? To the point where I'm feeling a little tinge of happiness again. That has been empowering. Not really finding any signs, no sighting of any kind. That's how hunting is. Sometimes you don't find anything. And I'll try again tomorrow, walk some other trails. Safety is number one on an expedition like this. You know, it's zero degrees outside. It's very easy to get cold and not be able to recover from that. getting ready to head up into the mountains for a small game ptarmigan hunt. My wife told me yesterday she wanted some variety in our diet, so I told her I'll make it happen. So I'm gonna go up and scout the area today, and then tomorrow I'll bring my whole family up and we'll get to do it all together. My plan today is to go up and lay some tracks through areas where I think there might be ptarmigan. Snow, once it's been disturbed, will harden overnight, and that will create a good walking surface for myself and my family tomorrow. I really want this hunt to be enjoyable for them, and I want them to want to do it again. Gathering meat the way that I do to fill our freezer for the winter time, there's a lot of work and patience that goes into it, and I'm not always guaranteed a successful outcome. But I find it very satisfying to live off-grid out here and survive in the middle of the woods. There's one right there. The little buggers are fast on the snow, and I am not. Well, I think that ptarmigan's going to live to fly another day, because I am not going to be able to get through that brush. He's a lot smaller than I am. Uh, it's getting pretty late here. Sun's going down. It's getting dark. I've laid a pretty good series of tracks in the brush to walk on tomorrow head home, be back up here with the family in the morning. We'll try and find some birds. Some people are after adrenaline. I am after feeling self-sufficient and feeling happy about myself and what I did that day. This one looks good. It's nice and straight. There's no big knots, no big branches. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Jesse and I are getting things prepped up to go out to the cabin. We spend most of the time in Fairbanks, but we're not home until we're out at the family homestead living off grid. Ta-da! All right. Success. Now he's got to cut a bunch of branches off. The cabin is where I want to be. The cabin is where we can live how we want and do what we want. cut some of these guys off. We're gonna try to go out to the Chena. I made through all of the ice. I haven't done this before, but now is the time, and I'd really love to get some nice fatty fish to bring up to the cabin. Now it fits nice and tight down there. How's it feeling? I think it feels like I'm gonna catch a fish. All right, let's, let's do it. Go. Hopefully we're gonna get some pike tonight, but there's also some whitefish out there as well as some burbot. Uh, we're hoping that the spears work really good, but we're bringing the bow just in case. 
Well, this is really good. We've got rapids up here where the little fish like to hang out on top of. But let's see what we can see down in there. I get out there with my wife and watching her smile and laugh. Uh, that's really what we're chasing after, that big release of steam after being in town all summer. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot in town that irritates me. When I get to the cabin, I don't have the anxieties of normal day life. Out there, it's just my wife and I and nature. And really, that's all you need at the end of the day. And I kind of just want to get going. But first, it would be great to get some fish out there. They're so fast. In the past, we've gone out to the cabin just not quite prepared, and we've had hard winters. It's getting quite a bit darker. I think we really need to get some artificial light in there um, and see if we can just draw them up in there. Come here, little fishy. I like that. Yeah. Just go make some lunch and hang out and wait for it to get dark and come back with lights. Have some hot chocolate. Yeah. Well, I feel like we're in the right spot. I see fish. Look, look, look. Damn, I can't believe I didn't get him. Right here. That looks like a good spot, too. Right in there. No luck. Oh, look at him right there. Wow, look at that. Of a gun. That's quite the fish, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I thought it was moving. <laughs> Sucker's on there. At least we know the spears work. I don't know if that's going to come out. All right, you hold. <laughs> ready? Yeah. I'm going to pull like that. You ready? <laughs> Oh, man. Here's your masterpiece for today there, Chris. I'm mounting that on the wall. Here, let me come down with you. <laughs> All right, well, let's pack it up. Oh, I just want a fish to eat. I think people should live with more great mystery in their lives and just treating that as a gift, knowing that you never know what's around the bend. Today, the wind has died down, and the temperature's warmed up. Yesterday was a really nice walk on my local trails, but unfortunately, the wind really picked up, so there wasn't a lot of activity with grouse. My last hunt out here for small game, I got three grouse in the first 20 minutes of walking behind my house. Sometimes hunting is like that, where you walk this trail and there's grouse all over the place, and then other times they move around. The population is small game. They're always moving, just like me. I'm always moving. Last time I come through here, the wind was blowing real strong as this storm was coming in. Now it's a better moment to hunt here because it's a lot calmer, there's no wind busting trees open and breaking branches, getting the game all spooky. Sometimes you look out far out in the woods and you see something that looks like a grouse. And you just trust in your eyes, walk up to it, and then realize maybe your eyes are aging. Because that ain't no grouse. That's just a branch. A lot of times I see birds in this spot. I don't know why. It's like a little highway right here. These birds, they really forage and move around everywhere, on the ground and up in the trees, mid-level on branches, roosting, up high getting buds off the quaking aspens. And sometimes they like to conceal themselves. If there's a lot of aerial predators around, they like to conceal themselves deep in the, the branches of a small spruce thicket. That's another place they like to hide. This hunt 
is pretty special to me because I can do this locally. I could just walk around. You know, I think about the sustainability of life. I ain't got no electric bills. I ain't got no heating bills. I'm burning wood. I'm eating exclusively wild game that I catch. And it don't cost me anything except some miles on my boots. Now, I'm just burning a few calories, and I could use a, a few calories burnt off the midsection. Haven't seen much rough grouse sign. Doesn't mean that they're not there. They're here somewhere. But for now, I'm going to keep hunting hard because I can't be coming home empty handed. No matter how tough you are, no matter how smart you are, you're really never completely in control. So you, you have to keep the faith and, uh, and keep, keep going, keep trying. So for guns, you got one rifle for hunting bear or moose, one just uh, everyday carry pistol for bear defense, and a 22 pistol that you hunt most of your small critters with. I'll just load up the, uh, the bear pistol. Always on the lookout for bears. Um, I wouldn't say I'm expecting them, but it's, you know, if you knew there was a serial killer in the neighborhood, you'd keep your eye out for him, right? Armed and ready for predators, Alex and Sipsy must hike three miles of difficult terrain. With nightfall approaching, it's vital they reach the cabin before temperatures drop. <laughs> All right, Bobby. OK, go on, go on. Attaboy. Sipsy, I can tell he's as anxious as I am to get up to our, our cabin. Yeah, pull in ass dog. Sipsy is a happy dog, as always, when he's out here. He just, every moment of living out here, he enjoys. When he's out here, he hunts. <laughs> That's all he does. He's always out there hunting. And every once in a while, I will corral him to help help me do some work. But uh, for the most part, I just let him do his own thing, live his, live his happy dog life. All right, Sips, let's get it done. Coming up here with Sipsy, I wanted to see if I could, you know, just move out into the wilderness and make it on my own. Um, you know, kind of like the ultimate test of self-sufficiency. Everything here is more extreme, and that's what I like. <sighs> me. <sighs> Come on, you bitch. <sighs> this is really tough. Everything hurts. My back, my legs, I'm out of breath. I'm pretty tired. <laughs> I've gotten pretty out of shape. I'm getting really sweaty, which you don't want to get sweaty when it's cold out like this, because then when you stop to take a break, you freeze. Overall, pretty miserable, but I need to get to the cabin, and I don't know if that's going to happen. And the main thing is the cold out here. If you aren't constantly on top of it, you could die, you could lose a toe. Small mistakes can add up and have dire consequences. <sighs> Doesn't look like much, but this hill's a bitch. Let's do this the slow way. You just really gotta take your time, because if you don't plant your feet good, you'll just go right back down. You know, in the city or whatever, you go to the gym and you blast hard for an hour or whatever, and then that's it. The rest of the day you're sitting. But here you just, everywhere you go, you walk. I'm really wet. So uh, the longer this not a fire going, the colder I'm going to get. And I don't really feel like having hypothermia tonight. Uh, deep snow is tough. Getting through this deep snow with the sled's hard. <laughs> this doesn't look like anything, but it's the last little Last little challenge. Oh, look at you showing off. Here we are. Whew. Pretty tired. 
My legs are pretty cramping, so I gotta drink a lot of water. I'm just out of shape. <laughs> but uh, it's good to be here. I haven't been up here for a while. I mean, I haven't lived here for like years. Everything's just like I remember. This like, to me, this is just like home, you know? Like nowhere else really, really ever felt like home. But this is definitely feels like my home to me. I feel really good to be here, really peaceful. The Alaska lifestyle is tough for most. There's a lot of balance you have to do. You just have to have the right mindset. I got some salmon, a couple moose roasts. The surf and the turf. I think this is good. All right, yeah. While they wait for nightfall to make a second attempt at fishing, Chris and Jesse Morse take full advantage of their time by pulling carrots from their home garden, an essential crop that will be vital once they move to their off-grid cabin. Let's see how big these jars are. I guess we need to make it fit, right? You really got to make sure that you're getting your veggies and your vitamins in when you're out at the cabin. You're really working hard. You're pushing through a lot of stuff, uh, and you're burning up a lot of calories. So not only is meat and fat important, but vegetables and minerals and vitamins are also really important. And this is how we do it. If you buy regular run-of-the-mill grocery store carrots, those seeds weren't properly, like, I'm singing to my carrots out there, you know? I'm heating the water to feed the carrots. I'm hanging out with them. I care about my carrots. And I feel like that comes across when you're eating them. It's so much more fulfilling to grow your own vegetables. Besides all the hippie b I just don't like buying things. And carrots are easy to grow. <laughs> you don't grow nothing. It's me all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't do any of that hippie stuff. <laughs> that hippie stuff. Oh my goodness. Two, four, six, eight. Cue all. We're gonna cook them at 10 PSI uh, for about an hour. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna cook all of the um, bacteria and everything out of these jars. It's gonna seal them up. And then these are good for like up to five years. Let's get this thing to stir it up, huh? I don't know about you, my phone is just driving me nuts today. Everybody's texting me. I pick my phone up maybe four times a day and I'll hit that social media button right on my phone. Out at the cabin, I will not have that luxury. It's not gonna connect to anything. So for the first few days, it's gonna be a weird transition, but it's freeing. It's like, it's better. I just can't wait to get out of town and to just get out and away from everything. Not very many people have the opportunity to just walk out their door and go hunting, uh, especially with their family. All right, Gilbert, you want to start the snow machine? Thanks, buddy. Shall we go? I'm heading out into the mountains to hunt ptarmigan with my family. It creates a lot of extra work and prep and planning to take my family into the mountains, but it's really important. They're not going to learn anything sitting back at the house. So we're going to actually go up above the trail here and see if we can find them. I see a boatload of tracks up there. So you just want us to stay here? Yeah, just hang tight. If you hear them clucking down there, find a way to let me know. Sounds good. All right, I'll be back in a little bit. Love you guys. All right, love you. This right here is ptarmigan tracks. They land, and then they just walk from brush to brush. So we're just gonna ease our way up here. I'm super happy I put these tracks in because I'm able to walk around and look for these birds much, much easier. But spotting these birds is very difficult. And the birds are white, the snow is white, so everything is white around you. When we go out hunting, kids, what are some of the safety things we have to remember? Which way does the gun point? Away from the people. That's right. And where do you stand 
if daddy has a gun and you're hunting with him, where do you stand? The mountain. <laughs> behind him. We always want to make sure we stand behind him. And what else? Do we need to be quiet? Mm -hmm. Should we practice being a little quieter? No. <laughs> meow. Meow. Maybe we should be a little quiet. Bull moose over there. Bull moose over there. It's not moose season. All I can see is his back and his rack. It's neat seeing other species when you're out hunting, just going about their lives. This belly's not great right now. With the snow and the whiteout, I can't see anything. The snow's starting to come down pretty heavy, so I need to get back to the family, and we'll continue on up the mountain and uh, reset. Daddy's back. Did you get anything? Nope. I got no clue where they are. Oh, sad. Shall we keep moving? Yep. Guys, we made it up here. Yeah. Let's go hunting. Gilbert and Ellie, do you know the rules of uh, hunting and gun safety? Can't remember. The rule is you stay behind me at all times, and you have to be quiet, OK? OK. Hey. Every time I take my kids out, it's a uh, learning lesson for them, kind of like going to school. But we have much more real consequences. Come on, guys. Follow Daddy. It's cold out. There's snow. There's bad weather to contend with. And for them to learn how to deal with all that stuff will set them up well for their futures. Man, it's coming down out here. You can't even see most of the mountain. Oh, yeah, it's completely gone from sight. Today's really not our day. The kids are all wet from the snow falling and melting on them, and mm -hmm. Gilbert's not doing super hot. I think we probably should call it a day. It's a bummer not being able to be successful on the hunt today. Hunting for us is a valuable resource we only eat wild game out here. I will be back tomorrow, and I will chase these birds some more. Surviving here requires a lot of gambles. So even if it seems pretty quiet and serene, there's always uh, kind of a big head game going on. You're always thinking about the cold uh, constantly. Hey, you ready? My first morning here, everything hurts. I'm pretty tired. First order of business is I got to get some water. Now I'm going to go down to the creek, fill up as much water as I can carry, come back. I need to drink water. I'm dehydrated. Otherwise, I'm going to deteriorate pretty fast. Whenever I'm walking, you know, it's easy to, uh, it's easy to just, you know, kind of stare in the ground in front of you. But I always try to maintain a little discipline and always be looking around, because there could be a bear or a moose. You always want to be aware of your surroundings. If you're looking around, you'll notice kind of the beauty and just get to know your surroundings better. If you're living in a larger city, you tend to like kind of want to put blinders on. There's too much stuff, so you kind of have to block yourself off from it. But here, you'll want to do the opposite. Everything you want to see and experience. So you can see there's some ice here. I think there's going to be water in there, so I'll just see if I can fill up here. This ice is pretty thick, so I'm gonna use my ax to cut a hole through it. Makes me a little worried, just getting so cold so quick. I might not be able to just kind of take it easy and get used to things slowly. I might have to just rev into high gear and really start preparing, but it's gonna be a bad winter. That should be enough. Living out here, you gain uh, a deep appreciation for many things that uh, you definitely take for granted living in the city. 
Uh, water's a big one. I mean, you can see how much effort it took me to hike up here. I got home, I was tired as It would have been nice to eat like a big dinner, but first I need to get water. You wanna go eat, Sipsy, you hungry? Oh, it's pretty heavy. <clears throat> yeah, this is a lot of work just to get water. An ideal lifestyle here in Alaska is one where you live in tune with nature as best you can. And this is the way I do it. On this next trip into nature's grocery store, I intend to connect and come home with some grouse. here in these thick forests, it's a different kind of hunting. I mean, you don't have no time to follow through. You hear them brrr, explode up off the forest floor, and you got a split second to get a shotgun barrel at them and take aim and, and fire in a window between spruce thickets. It's a tricky bird to hunt. Jump it in your car and heading to the supermarket and grabbing a little bit of chicken on sale. There's really no physical activity that goes on with procuring that food. I try to think about this small game hunting. You know, you're not always gonna find chicken in stock. It's a game of walking around as much as you can and really looking around. You're not going to the store with uh, some money in your pocket to buy some prepackaged stuff. You're just walking around a nature supermarket. Walking for about six or seven miles now, but I'm not seeing a lot of sign. And this ain't just a walk with a shotgun. It's beautiful, but I want to come home with some grouse. I've been hunting hungry all day. Grouse will feed on these buds on those cottonwoods. This is a good spot. It's always produced. I think I've seen something run across the trail up here. See a grouse right here. Seven miles of hiking, just all of a sudden, out of the shadows, pops a rough grouse. So I always try to buy my shotgun shells used from people. This box of 20 shotgun shells, I think I spent a dollar 75 on them. So for a mere penny, I've got a half pound of rough grouse that I can cook up and eat. I used to hunt these back on the East Coast as a kid in Maine. My Indian grandmother would be sitting in a chair smoking a cigarette, and I'd be out in the woods all day, and I'd come up right in the window. I'd hold a grouse up in the window and jump her, a cigarette fall out of her mouth. She'd get excited every time I'd come home with, with grouse. My favorite upland bird is the ruffed grouse. This is actually a pretty big one. They have a, a real light-colored meat. They're almost like poultry. They're kind of uh, considered to be the most desirable upland bird species to catch for the table. It's been a long hunt. I've been hiking eight miles today. I'm getting kind of hungry. I'm going to start a little fire and just roast this grouse here on the bluff, have a nice view. There are no conveniences in the city that could ever bring me back. Got a little bit of fresh snow last night. It's still kind of cloudy overhead. I'm up here today just to see it through. You know, yesterday I could have gotten all discouraged and decided not to come back after bringing my family up here and everybody getting cold and wet. But I'm hoping to bag a ptarmigan today for the family dinner, get a little variety into our diets, and it'll make everybody really happy, I think.
I'm seeing ptarmigan tracks everywhere up here. It's obvious the birds are in this area. They're a challenge to go after because they're really spooky birds. And so they tend to fly off after they hear a sharp noise, which can make things pretty exciting chasing them around. It's a lot of fun and I always enjoy it. Just checking to make sure my scope is clear. There's some birds just right over the edge of the hill right there. I gotta sneak forward a little bit to where I got a clear shot and then we'll we'll take one. Oh, right there. Got him. Look at that beautiful bird. Looks like I nailed him pretty good. This is why they're so hard to see in this low light condition. They're just the same color as the snow and the same color as the clouds. This is why you don't give up until you've accomplished something. I could have went home yesterday like a whipped dog and the weather was bad and the this and the that and all these excuses, but I persevered, I came back and now we're gonna be eating good tonight. Your attitude is what is gonna keep you alive in the woods. If you feel that you're not gonna make it, if you feel you're gonna to starve to death, you probably are. Let's go get them bourbon. All right. You know our spear fishing? It didn't turn out as we'd hoped. We figured we'd try a different approach this time and try setting some bourbon line. Watch your step through the ice. It would be really great if we could get some fish up at the cabin that energy, it's something that I absolutely can't get from moose or from the grouse out there. It's a treat. What a gorgeous night. Right in there. That's what I was saying, right over this way. Let's go look at this. We're gonna throw, uh, you know, like six foot lines in with two or three hooks on them, baited. This is a good spot. Not it on stringing up the stinky uh, herring. It's oh. <laughs> not fair. I called not it. Those are the rules. Uh, one, two, three, not, not it. it. <laughs> I, said I win. It was nose goes. Yeah. <laughs> this is what entices all of the burbot from the miles away. So uh, I don't know. They're supposed to be oily and smelly. Like that? That looks pretty good. I'm gonna get really excited if we get a burbot. Just you wait. Yeah. <laughs> I've never gotten one before, but burbot are called the poor man's lobster. Apparently, if you cook these, I've heard in a microwave, I kid you not. I heard if you cook a burbot in a microwave, it will taste like lobster. It's gonna be a stinking, exciting morning if we get one in yeah. here in a few hours. Oh yes, stink fish. All right. So let's put it in, huh? Burbot generally are out scouting for rotten and dead fish, and they don't like to combat with the pike. So they come out in the evening when nothing else is out because they are hunting by sense of smell anyways. And so here we are out at night. Well, we got hooks out. Let's get out of here. I think we'll get something. Did the water drop a bunch? Sure did. Damn. There's no way our hooks are even in the water. No. No. What a bummer. Hmm. Well. Nothing there. Maybe something got the bait. Let's see what else is out here. Holy cow. Holy cow. Shut up, love. Love her. Love her's perfect. Get out of town with that. Good it's job. Funny. That's a little guy. Hey, <laughs> perfect. 
Herbert. He didn't even get his bait. <laughs> I really didn't expect to get a fish uh, after coming up onto the river here today and seeing how low the river dropped, but we must have got him early last night. Awesome. All right, let's get on out of here. The cabin is just days away, and now we have a burbot to take with us for our first meal out there. It's one of the most basic and natural ways of getting a meal, is using your body and hiking around and matching your wits to the animals, really paying attention and looking, never giving up. This might be unconventional to some folks, but this is just one of the ways that you can get a bite to eat from this natural landscape. You go to a fast food restaurant, pull up to a line, swipe your card, have some french fries and a hamburger, well, this is kind of like my version of fast food. Go on a long eight mile hike, stop here with a good lookout, and grill it on the spot. Dang, that come out good. Ended up with some good food today. You know, living without electricity, living without running water, eating more of your, your daily intake from natural food sources like wild game, it's not easy but I wouldn't want it any other way. So I'm just thankful for the sights. I'm thankful for this wild landscape, and I'm thankful for this meal. All right, have you guys ever seen a ptarmigan before? Nope. Look at the wingspan on this thing. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Uh -huh. I think it's great being able to teach my son and my daughter how to field dress animals. Are you ready to see how this works? It's super special to me because my dad taught me how to do it. So we're going on four generations now of fathers teaching their children how to field dress animals. Pull the wings off. We'll have a nice cleaned ptarmigan breast. I enjoy passing on my knowledge to my kids out here. Someday they're going to be on their own and I won't be there to help them out. I don't know what path their life is going to take, but maybe someday they'll be able to use this information that I'm trying to pass on to them. All right, guys, let's go give this to mom so we, she can cook it up for dinner. You want to carry it? All right, you carry that up to mom. I love cooking on a fire. It's just primitive force, you know, and we've harnessed it and cooks our food and makes it delicious. Tonight is just about uh, rewarding myself for the hard work. So we're gonna have a nice beans and sausage dinner. I would definitely say I earned this meal. This is like two, two days of effort in the, in the making. It's not just about like treating myself to like something that tastes good, you know, just because like I'm a glutton. It's like, I need this. If I don't have a hot meal, I'm gonna slowly deteriorate until I'm so miserable that I either just have to quit and get out of here or, or die. The challenge never ends. You either gotta buck up and kind of uh, take the challenge head on or go somewhere else. Hopefully, I can make it through an entire winter, but uh, I don't know. <laughs>